Hello, Blue Water Church family and friends. Thanks for tuning in today on Thanksgiving weekend or later if that is when you're listening. So glad to have you here. And uh, just in case this is uh, your first time watching one of these videos, you happen to click on the links while you were scrolling through YouTube. Uh, let me just say hello and welcome. My name is Corrine and I get the great privilege of pastoring at this small local church in King Carden, Ontario called Blue Water Church. And right now Blue Water is in this season where we are hosting our weekly teaching videos, these uh, worship services on YouTube online every week. And we also emphasize strongly connecting face-to-face -face in deeper relationships and community where uh, we really have the opportunity to know one another, to be known by, by God and by each other. And we call these groups moorings. Moorings are small groups that meet throughout the week where we come together to pray, to learn how to follow Jesus and know Jesus together. We also have an opportunity to gather together for a larger event that takes place once a month and it's called Supper and Stories. And Supper and Stories is very much like it sounds. Uh, we gather to share a meal and then hear a story from the life of Jesus. And these are wonderful celebratory times of uh, coming together as a church family and also welcoming in a lot of people from our local Kincardine community who may not otherwise ever have the opportunity to hear a Jesus story because they are not likely to seek it in a lot of the ways that us church people, if that is who you are, someone who's been part of a church congregation for many years, perhaps all of our lives in some cases, um, that Sunday morning service space uh, in a church building is comfortable for a lot of us, but it doesn't feel safe, it doesn't feel welcoming for people who uh, are not already part of that in-group of church. So that is uh, largely why we practice uh, this gathering of supper and stories. And the next one is coming up on October 23rd, that's two weeks from today. And uh, we meet downtown in our ministry space that uh, we rent and we've called it The Bridge. So we'll be meeting at The Bridge at 5.30 on October 23rd. And because it's a small space, we have limited seating. We can only squeeze in 45 people. So for this reason, we ask that you sign up ahead of time to reserve your seat and let us know how many people you're bringing with you. You can do that by visiting our website, bluewaterchurch.ca slash stories. So if you'd like to join us, and I hope you do, because I think you'll enjoy it, please head to bluewaterchurch.ca slash stories just to save your spot well in advance. I think last time I checked, we were already at about the halfway point and it tends to fill up uh, in the week leading up to supper and stories. So hope to see you there. And today we're going to hear a message, a sermon from Paul Kiss. Paul Kiss pastors at New Life Church in Collingwood. New Life is part of our denomination, the Be In Christ Church of Canada. We heard from Paul last week when he introduced to us the topic of being and becoming disciples of Jesus. And for those of us who are following Jesus or even curious to follow Jesus, uh, interested in, in what this Jesus character is really like, our heart's desire is to know Jesus, is to know God as he can be known in our lives. And so Paul is gonna be sharing today about how we can actually get to know Jesus by following his instructions to us, by following the way of Jesus. This is a very active and applicable and practical way for us to know Jesus in our everyday lives. So we are gonna just uh, take a pause to pray, and then I'm gonna pass this video right over to Paul so that he can take this time uh, to teach us today. And then after that, I'll say a few more words, and we'll close with a worship song from Nathan. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that 
Despite all the things that we see happening in the world that are so often troubling, um, that are challenging, that are painful, even though all these things are true, we acknowledge that you ultimately are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord of creation. You have the final say, and you have not left us alone. You promise never to leave us nor forsake us. You've given us the gift of your spirit, and you've given us the gift of community, community of people who are longing to know you and committed to following you. Thank you so much that we get to link arms together, especially through, through places like Moorings, these small groups that meet throughout the week to encounter you, Jesus and to be drawn together by your spirit. Thank you for supper and stories. This is a place where people are hearing about you and experiencing your love in real time in, uh, for some people, uh, the first time that they've ever really experienced a community like this. Um, thank you so much that we have so many things to be thankful for, even small things. And that even in the midst of of grief and pain at the end of the day we can be grateful that you are lord that you are who you say you are and that you are with us and that you're holding us so we give you our attention we give you this time thank you so much for paul and this message that he has prepared just for us in your beautiful name we pray jesus amen and uh, here's paul Hi friends, it is good to be with you again. My name is Paul Kiss and I'm the pastor at New Life Church in Collingwood. We are in week two of a series on discipleship. And what I'm going to talk about this morning may seem like it's contradicting what I said last week. Last week I said that discipleship is about becoming more and more like Jesus, much more than it is about acquiring information about Jesus. And I talked a lot about moving beyond just Bible study and talking about Jesus or learning about Jesus and much more in walking with Jesus. So today, I'd like to explore with you this idea of what it looks like when we walk with Jesus. And I think one of the most profound things about learning to become more like Jesus is to follow him in his way. And in order to do that, we need to understand what he's calling us to. And for us to do that, of course, we're going to look at the scriptures and invite the Holy Spirit to help us live out the teachings of Jesus. So I want to introduce you to a book. And this is a picture of a man named Mark Scandrett. So I've met Mark um, in part of my master's program out of uh, Fresno Pacific University, was in San Francisco and met him there and then met him also uh, online um, through uh, various teaching platforms. And he's written a book called Practicing the Way of Jesus, Life Together in the Kingdom of Love. And it's a wonderful, um, easy read about what it's like to, to take the teachings of Jesus seriously enough that we begin to live them out. And he writes this about this form of discipleship. He says this, The invitation to follow the way of Jesus doesn't help us cope with the busy lives we have or support our quest for the Canadian dream. He wrote American, I just put in Canadian. But it does offer us a radical alternative to the ways of this world that are making us hurried and weary and tired. So what I hope to do with us for the next little while is explore what it looks like to take Jesus seriously in what he called us to, and that was to follow him and to choose his way. 
and to walk down the same paths that he walked down. And in so doing, not only are we learning about him, but we are beginning to understand who he is and we are opening ourselves up to the spirit that is wanting to reveal more and more the glory of God in us that we looked at last week. We're opening ourselves up more and more to that spirit working in us the things that Jesus desires. So this morning, today, we want to look at some of the teachings of Jesus at the very end of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It's a few chapters of Matthew recording for us some phenomenal teachings of Jesus. And at the end of it, Jesus says this in Matthew 7, 24. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. It's such such a, a beautiful invitation for us to follow him in his teaching. And he goes on, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And so here's an invitation from Jesus. After he gives uh, a long discourse, he says, if you want to be wise, then follow my teaching. And we have this wonderful ability to to find ways of skirting around some of the things that we don't really want to do. So um, I've noticed uh, over years of, of doing this myself and meeting with other Christians, Uh, As we read the Bible and we talk about Jesus and we talk about what it means to follow Jesus and how to follow Jesus and various things like that, uh, sometimes we just do things like we stall. We know what we're supposed to do, but we ask questions to clarify things. We're not quite sure if we're understanding the text, so we want some clarification and we go looking for clarification. Or we wonder about the literalness of of a teaching or something like that. And these are all valid and meaningful, but but somehow I think we kind of use that as the get out of jail card or the the loophole uh, in the clause that lets us not have to deal with some of the things that we'd really just rather not deal with. And Jesus says, anyone who listens to my teaching and puts it into practice is a very wise person. I think it should be clear to us that Jesus wanted his followers to obey his teachings, to live out the things that he had asked us to do, to follow him down those valleys and paths and roads and around the corners, all the places that he went to that he's inviting us Um, into as well. And so there are teachings of Jesus that we resonate with. They're easy for us. They're simple and we embrace them and we run with them. And what might be easy for you might not be easy for somebody else and vice versa. So we tend to gravitate to those ones that are more palatable for us. But there are some really hard teachings of Jesus. And I think one of the hardest things he called us to do is to express our faith in love. And loving the way that Jesus loved people is not an easy thing to do. And I think the biggest thing he asked of us is to love each other, love this world the way that Christ has loved us. And Jesus, when he was with his disciples um, right before his execution, He got down and he served them and he washed their feet. And then he said this to them, I'm giving you a new command that you love each other as I have loved you. And it sounds so similar to love each other as you love yourself. But he's actually building on that and saying, I want you to love people the way I am loving you. And he was about to show them the way he would love them, how far he would go, all the way to the cross. And so if we 
in our discipleship want to become more and more like Jesus, perhaps one of the most profound ways for us to do that, which is staring us right in the face, is to begin to live out the teachings of Jesus, not just study the teachings of Jesus, not just talk about the teachings of Jesus and how they could be lived out, but to begin together living them out in real and meaningful ways. And they are going to be an outward expression of Christ's love working through you. So I think when it comes to discipleship, that God is far more concerned with how well you love than with how much you know. God is more concerned about how well you love the people he's put into your life than about how much you know about him or about the Bible or, or about theology. He's inviting us to live out his teaching. So what happens when you start living out the teachings of Jesus? What begins to change? What begins to be transformed within you? I think something that happens is we realize very quickly, some of them aren't too difficult to do. Others are very difficult. And it's at this point that we have to open ourselves up to the spirit of Christ that is revealing the glory of Christ in us that Paul wrote about last week in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We open ourselves up to that spirit and we invite the spirit of Christ to begin to work within us and enable us in partnership with him to live out all these things that Jesus has called us to. And so I think living out the teachings of Jesus is part of the way of becoming like Jesus. Jesus lived uh, a life of love and he's calling us and he's saying, hey, I want you to come with me down this road. And that's the journey of walking with him. This is about exploring, understanding him, uh, uh, knowing him more and more intimately because we are taking up uh, the yoke that he promised to give us, which was easy and light. It just requires that we die to ourselves in order to take that on. And so I think one of the best ways to get to know Jesus is actually just to follow him in his teachings because he's inviting us into, into his life by following his way. Have you ever been to... Uh, to a sale, an auction, even a, even a garage sale. And they, they have a, a, a table or many tables that are just spread with all kinds of things. And you just kind of walk around and you're allowed to pick and choose. You know, it might be pick, pick three things for $5 or, or pick um, five things for $25. And you can go on the table and you can pick anything you want. And you look at some things like, yeah, not interested, not interested. Ooh, that would be lovely. And so you take that and you take this and you, and you, and you grab this. And soon you've got your little basket full and you go and you pay and you're happy because you got what you wanted. I think sometimes that's how we approach the scriptures. Uh, you know, particularly when, when it comes to the teachings of Jesus, we, we treat his teachings kind of like a pick and choose table. Well, I like this one and this one and this one, but I'm not interested in these, so we'll just leave them on the table. And then we kind of lean into the ones that we either already have or can do ourselves that don't require much effort. And this is the critical moment where I think the Spirit of Christ says, let's, let's try everything on the table. And there are lots of teachings of Jesus that, that we can live out and embrace when he calls us to follow him. And there are some teachings of Jesus that are just downright hard. They're difficult. We're not even sure we agree with it. 
So why would we want to, to follow him and live it out? Let me give you a few examples. So, and we'll just, we'll pull these from, um, mostly from the Sermon on the Mount. But this idea of having grace for the unlovable, where Jesus models for us, for example, in Matthew 9, he's invited to a dinner party and and all of the people around Jesus, the, the religious people, the well-intentioned Bible-believing people are really upset with him for hanging out with people that they considered unlovable, that they considered to be scum. You know, the people that are going to influence you in a bad way. And I think Jesus calls us to immerse ourselves with those kind of people, people that we often refer to as the other. And we're invited to love the unlovable. And that's a hard teaching of Jesus to follow. Forgiveness for those who have hurt you. In Matthew 6, in the Lord's Prayer, we're taught how to pray that God would forgive us like we forgive others. And then right after that, Jesus says, if you forgive people, you'll be forgiven. If you fail to forgive people, you will not be forgiven. In Matthew 5, Jesus talks about being reconciled to a person who has something against you. How difficult it is for us to follow him in this kind of teaching, to be reconciled with people that we've become estranged to. And this often happens in congregations. We just avoid people or we go to another congregation. Or we gossip about them and we talk about them behind their back, maybe even slander them. And there's been a wedge put between you. And here's an invitation from Jesus to be reconciled. And Matthew, also in Matthew 5, Jesus says, Give to anyone who asks. Lend to those who are seeking from you. And a little bit later in chapter 6, he, along this same vein, says, Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven instead of treasures on earth. And then also in Matthew 5, Jesus invites us to be peacemakers. To, instead of choosing violence, to choose love. And to love our enemies. Now, in every single one of these illustrations that I just gave, you might have already had conversations about, well, why maybe he didn't mean this or it might possibly mean that. And we have this wonderful ability of kind of explaining away or justifying our response that might but not be in line. Um, and I'm not advocating for a literalistic reading of everything in the scriptures. But I do suspect that we play a bit of a game in dismissing some of the teachings of Jesus uh, and finding rationales for why we don't follow it simply because we don't want to. And again, it's at that moment that the Spirit is wanting to reveal the glory of Christ in us by inviting us to lean into these teachings and to explore them together. So how do you lean into the teachings of Jesus? particularly these ones that are hard. You know, grace for the unlovable, forgiveness for someone who's hurt you, uh, reconciliation to someone who's estranged with you, generosity to those who are in need, and peacemaking over violence. Those are just a few. But how do you lean into those difficult teachings when maybe you're sitting there and saying, I'm not ready to yet? Well, let me suggest uh, a few things to consider. Maybe they're good, maybe they're not. You might have some better ideas, and I'd encourage you to talk about that. Start with what you can do, and then prayerfully move on from there. So what can you embrace? What can you lean into in the teachings of Jesus that you can begin to regularly make a part of your life so that you're following him in his way? And as you begin to work on those, and they begin to become a part of your life, then prayerfully ask him to show you what's next. And let the Spirit of Christ lead you into how you're going to follow Jesus in what he's asking you to follow. So start with what you can do and work from there. 
don't do it alone. Faith is meant to be lived in community. And this is what I was talking about last week when I said we'll talk more about this, is uh, discipleship is meant to take place in community, not by yourself. So while your personal Bible study and prayer life uh, might be great, uh, let me encourage you to lean into the community of faith to which you belong as a huge part of how you will follow Jesus and his teachings. And that means you're going to have to be honest about where you're at and about where you hope to be. And that also means you're going to have to confess when you're not doing so well. And this is where the rubber hits the road. You're going to have to talk about your failures. And another word that we use for that is you're going to have to talk about your sin. But what a beautiful community who's able to do that and still love each other and accept each other. So start with what you can do. Don't do it alone. Do it together. Celebrate your success. And then give thanks to God for for partnering with you and working in your life, for transforming you as you as you obediently say yes to what he's asking you to do. And then finally, just be gracious with failure. You're not going to to always get it right. And uh, that's going to be your whole life of just learning how to be gracious towards yourself and towards others uh, when failure happens. And if it happens, try again, repeat steps one to three. You know, when, when the Apostle Paul was writing to a group of Christians in a province known as Galatia, the letter in our Bible is called the, the letter of Galatians, he was really helping them live, uh, move out of this kind of bounded way of thinking about certain behavior and parameters based on very narrowly defined understanding of, of, of Scripture. And, uh, and it was very much about the, um, having the right answers, having the right behavior which we tend to still do a lot today. And Paul said, listen, if you're going to get caught up in that stuff, it's only leading you back into slavery. He said in in chapter 5, verse 6, he said, what is really important is that faith expresses itself in love. (laughs) And when you are taking up the teachings of Jesus and beginning to lean into those teachings and getting to know Jesus more and more because you're following his way, then you are allowing your faith to be expressed in love. And whenever you're doing that, it shows. So I don't know, um, we have to be careful that we're not looking for just, uh, you know, outward appearances to say, oh, that person's following Jesus because they're doing all the right things and ticking off all the right boxes. But Jesus did also say in his teaching, you know a tree by its fruit. And, uh, and I think that when we are leaning into the teachings of Jesus and, and our discipleship is about becoming more like him rather than just acquiring information about him, it actually begins to show. So what are some of the signs that you are becoming more and more like Jesus because you're embracing his teaching? Well, I think first of all is what Paul writes at the end of Galatians is that the fruit of the Spirit Galatians 5.22 just is more characteristic of your life. When people see you, they see things like, um, you know, faith, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. I can't remember all of them. Uh, But those are becoming more and more evident in your life. So the fruit of the Spirit is blossoming and, and showing up all throughout your life. I think the evidence or a sign that you're becoming more like Jesus is that your life is more becoming more about others than it is about you. And maybe these are subtle and, and hard to, to quantify, but I think a person who is genuinely becoming more like Jesus is, is other-oriented, outward-focused, and far less concerned about about themselves and getting what they want or what they need. In fact, your attitude to others is much more open. When I say others, uh, I mean people that think differently than us, that behave differently than us, that act differently than us. And anybody who's like that, we tend to other them. We kind of put them out there as those kind of people and we tend not to associate with them. 
But when you are leaning into the teachings of Jesus and getting to know him and becoming more like him, then your life is actually more about others than it is about yourself. Um, I think you just find yourself talking to God a lot throughout your day. And, and these might be really simplistic, certainly not exhaustive. But you just find yourself having a conversation with God throughout your day, in your mind, out loud, um, just constantly um, dialoguing with Him in very intimate, first-person language. I think another sign that, that you're becoming more like Jesus is that you are less interested in convincing others on what to believe than you are with inviting them on a journey with Jesus. And let me flip that around. When you're becoming more like Jesus because you're leaning into his teachings, you're so much more interested in inviting people on a journey with Jesus than merely trying to convince them what you think they're supposed to believe. Agree, disagree. Uh, for me, I think that's just, these are all outworkings of this fruit of the spirit. And one more thing I'll, I'll throw out there, that when you're becoming more like Jesus, you are less and less afraid of God. I meet so many brothers and sisters who have this profound fear of God and of judgment when they have the Spirit of Christ in them. And the Apostle John uh, wrote a letter um, well, he wrote three letters, and in 1 John, his first letter, um, he writes about the fact that perfect love casts out fear. And when we are filled with the love of God, we, are, uh, we don't worry about judgment because we understand who he is. When you're becoming more and more like Jesus, your fear of God diminishes because you're understanding who he is in such deep, intimate ways. And you're beginning to understand who the God of love is. Anyone who listens to my teachings and puts them into practice is wise. So let me suggest, discipleship is about becoming more and more like Jesus. And perhaps the most profound way that you can uh, enter into that journey is to take him seriously in what he's called us to do and to be and to lean into his teachings and to begin to live them out and become more and more and more and more and more like him. Well, those are some of the thoughts that I have. And I hope that they are, uh, again, inspiring for you, that they're encouraging, that they're challenging some of your thinking, that they're raising questions, and that you will wrestle with some of what I've said and not agree with me on everything, but that's okay if it leads you into, uh, into embracing Jesus more, both personally and as a community, then, then we celebrate that together. Thanks for the opportunity to share with you. and. Uh, grace and peace to each of you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul, for sharing uh, another very helpful and practical message with us this week. And I don't know about you as you were listening, but certainly when Paul was listing some of those teachings from Jesus, he acknowledged that uh, some things are really easy for us to embrace. Well, those very same things might be a challenge for another person because our discipleship journey, our relationship with Jesus, our process of aligning ourselves in our thinking and in our hearts with the ways of Jesus looks very different for each one of us. And uh, certainly as I heard that list, there were one or two things where I thought, hmm, is that really what you meant, Jesus? And I'm not sure if I fully agree with you on that. And so Paul acknowledges this tension that we're not fully in alignment in all areas of our life with Jesus just because we 
want to follow him and we seek to know him because it is a process of being transformed. And so he didn't leave us hanging. He left us some really helpful tips that I just want to highlight before we go. How do you lean into these difficult teachings when you don't feel ready? And so Paul suggests, start with what you can do. Start with the teaching that you can embrace, that you are ready to incorporate into your life. And start together, not alone. Do this in community with people. Uh, a great place to do that is in a small group, in a mooring group. And if you'd like to learn more about moorings, uh, please head to our website, bluewaterchurch.ca slash moorings, so that you can join one of those small groups to uh, engage this process of discipleship in community together and encourage each other along the way. And then uh, Paul said, number three, celebrate success. Celebrate looking back where uh, you have changed, you have been transformed, your heart has come into alignment with the way, the character, the teaching of Jesus. And celebrate that movement because that's a sign of uh, your maturity in your spiritual life. And then number four is to give grace to failure. Where you acknowledge you're coming short, where you acknowledge, I'm not sure if I agree with Jesus on this. Notice it, give it to Jesus, maybe process it in community uh, with people who you trust and who love you and give yourself grace because we're not gonna be perfected overnight. This is a process for each of us, and we're each at a different stage and um, different speed of transform transformation as well. So uh, give yourself grace and accept the grace that Jesus extends to you and keep going, just keep going. So that's all that I have to say today. If you are on our email list, you will be receiving a short uh, Thanksgiving devotional, just a couple minutes straight to your email inbox. You can expect that to come in on our Thanksgiving holiday Monday. Or if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see it there as well. If you'd like to sign up for our email address, uh, email address, email list. That is uh, the best way to stay in touch, to hear all of the things that uh, Blue Water is up to in all of our many facets and areas of ministry and church life. So you can sign up for that email list at bluewaterchurch.ca and scroll to the bottom of any page and there's a button there to sign up for email list so you will always be part of the loop and know uh, what's going on, uh, where we've been and what's coming next at Blue Water Church. So as we close with this final worship song from Nathan, uh, thank you so much uh, to Nathan who's put in a lot of work uh, to create these worship videos that we can keep on enjoying. Um, let's just close with this by uh, whatever state we're in right now, whether full of joy and holiday spirit or um, grieving or sad or feeling listless or quiet. Jesus knows where you are and I ask Lord that you would meet each one in a personal way as we listen to this song now. Amen. See you next time. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice.
how great, how great is our God. Age to age He stands, and time is in His hands, beginning. Sing with me how great 